Hello and welcome to Maritime Radar. Seaports play a crucial role in the global trade and transportation, serving as hubs for the import and export of goods via ships. Many seaports also handle passenger traffic, serving as embarkation and disembarkation points for cruise ships, ferries, and other passenger vessels. Seaports vary in size and capacity, ranging from small local harbors to major international shipping hubs. Large and strategically located ports can have a significant impact on regional and national economies by facilitating trade efficiency, boosting industrialization, and providing employment opportunities. How to develop ports in the eastern part of Nigeria to drive the economy of the region are some of the issues that will be on the front burner on today's show. I'm Norma Obiaswala. Developing the eastern port of, in Nigeria has become imperative considering the significant economic benefits it will bring to the region. It will also help decongest the Lagos ports of Papua and Tinkan, which is already overwhelmed, leading to delays in cargo handling, increased logistics costs, inefficient trade and logistic operations. Other such benefits include stimulating regional economic growth, ensure enhanced export opportunities, attract foreign investment, boost industrialization, efficiency, trade, facilitation, increased revenue for Nigerian government, develop logistics and transportation services, and of course, drive global trade. The governors of Abia and Imo states may be nursing this idea that will ensure sustainable growth in the entire Southeast region. But before we get further on the lineup of today's program, let's find out the latest in Maritime News. The Nigerian Port Authority said it remitted the sum of 501 billion naira into the federal government's Consolidated Revenue Fund account in 2023. In a report released by the NPA, it was disclosed that the agency enabled the movement of 118,046 TEUs of containers from the ports by barges during the same period and implemented performance improvement measures that resulted in revenue generation and remittances into the CRF. It was also found that $77.7 .7 million and 17.6 billion naira were paid as tax to the federal government, which grew at various times in the period under review. Movement of cargo by barge has greatly enhanced port interland connectivity, as evidenced by the rise in numbers from a total of 80,244 TEUs in 2022, which by 2023 had grown to 118,046 TEUs. During the period on the review, the NPA also licensed 10 export processing terminals to facilitate exports at Nigerian seaports. The Comptroller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, Bashir Adewale Adeniyi, says he remains committed to improving the welfare of customs officers across the Federation by providing them with quality housing. Adeniyi was speaking during the flag-off ceremony of the NCS housing scheme in Gidan Iyali Estates, Millennium City, in Kaduna. The NCS boss noted that this is just one of such projects that are ready for flag-off in Kano, Asaba, Yola, Abuja, Enugu, and Uyo. The national spread is aimed at providing officers and men of the service the opportunity to access and benefit from the initiative. It is hoped that this initiative will go a long way in putting an end to the difficulty that has been experienced by some officers and men in the past. The International Maritime Organization and the National Labor Organization have issued a series of recommendations in a concerted effort to address violence and harassment, including sexual harassment, bullying and sexual assault in the maritime sector. The measures were discussed during the joint ILO and IMO Chapartite Working Group meeting held at the IMO headquarters in London. The recommendations include amendments to the ILO Maritime Labour Convention 2006, aligning it with the ILO Violence and Harassment Convention 2019. The changes also call for mandatory IMO 
training for seafarers and extra guidance for ship owners. The IMO and ILO, along with government representatives, ship owners and seafarers, said they are committed to launching an international awareness campaign aimed at raising awareness about the pressing issue of violence and harassment in the maritime sector. They will also explore potential legislative and policy advancements to prevent and address this issue. Parts of the recommendations include the use of the terminology violence and harassment, including sexual harassment, bullying and sexual assault, in relevance to IMO and ILO instruments and guidance. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Maritime Radar. In Igbo State, Nigeria, Yoguta Lake and Orashi River served as a route for the export of pulp produce, timber, coal and more to the neighboring regions in the colonial days up to 1854. It is also worthy of note that the state has the highest gas deposit in Nigeria and seven communities having oil deposits. In Abia State, the impact of the Obeaku deep seaport in Ukwa East local government area on the community is huge as the seaport, if developed, is about 25 nautical miles to the Atlantic Ocean. Experts say a collaboration between Abia and Aquaibon states would drop the cost of shipping by 27%. According to the Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority's report, over 65% of the cargoes that bet in Lagos, Nigeria, ends up in the southeast. The question to ask is why do eastern shippers prefer to take delivery of their cargo in Lagos, even when such goods find their way back to the east by road? at the end of the day. How can the eastern ports become more attractive to shippers in terms of addressing challenges of infrastructure, hinterland connection, security? How will incentives, inefficiency, water model port access, promotional competitive tariff attract shippers in this region? These are many more are the questions Temisa Omasaya, former DG Nimasa tends to speak to. Stay with us. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Um, let's start this conversation looking at uh, the economic potential of Nigerian ports. Well, first of all, um, whether fortunately or unfortunately, Nigeria is a very import dependent nation. Um, at the present moment, we are importing quite a lot of items to Nigeria. And therefore, the need for us to have a very efficient port system is very, very key, um, most especially as it affects the cost of goods and the cost of doing business. Um, there's some things you cannot change, you know, you cannot change international freight rates, but having to get the goods actually from the ports to the end user and actually claim those goods within um, fixed times and whatever else, it's very, very important. So therefore, the, it's very important. But when Nigeria becomes, becomes more of an export-oriented country, which is where we will get to in the future, um, there is need also to also make sure our internal logistics is efficient because um, the cost of producing goods might be cheap, but if your logistics are expensive, it will actually affect your cost and will make you very uncompetitive internationally. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, efficiency uh, as, as you were responding to me. Uh, so to ensure that we um, compete with other ports in the world, uh, this efficiency is key. Uh, therefore, we need to automate our port, we need to modernize our port uh, if we must become efficient. So how does the minister's uh, um, announcement of federal government uh, uh, close to uh, raising the fund, that is 800 million, to be able to rehabilitate this port. Uh, how does that come to you? Well, personally, it's good to rehabilitate it. And how did it get you in the first place? Lack of maintenance. Um, really and truly, you have the sheet piles and the rest, and they were not maintenance. They didn't put their cathodic protection to protect it, and they were just maintaining it. Ports like that should be lasting longer than that. But unfortunately, corrosion has affected it. So now we are in the position where we're in. But irrespective of that, I, I am quite surprised that contrast Nigeria still depends on river ports like the likes of Tinkan or whatever else. Those are supposed to be feeder ports from deep sea ports. What Nigeria has been focusing on is how can we bring in um, big vessels, which is what is happening right now in the Lekki deep sea ports, and then basically feed these kind of ports like the Lekki sea ports for um, um, the Tinkan and the Apapa ports, 
and then also feed the likes of um, Wari, um, Calabar, Port Harcourt and the rest so that they can begin to have cargoes. So that is where we should be looking at, where vessels are coming because at the end of the day, the bigger the vessels, the cost of a freight rate reduces per container. Now, when that now happens, then whatever savings you have, you can use that to feed the other areas so that you can become more efficient. That is my thinking. So if the minister is saying they are going to vent, it's, it's good because we cannot allow the infrastructure of the Tingana and Port of Papua to collapse. So there's definitely need for us to rehabilitate the sports and bring them back to life. Um, but you, you know the impact of Apapa and Tingan already on the economy because the amount of trucks which are queuing up, the inefficiencies and everything in those areas, they're affecting because every goods that land on the on the whatever, on the port, if it's not cleared within 48 hours, then you begin to generate um, demorage. And the the shipping, the, the terminal operators are very happy charging those demorage. But how can you how can you do that? Because if the customs are not clear, are not able to release the goods on time. You have issues if the trucks cannot get the port on time to load it they're also facing issues so they, they are just issues down the line so they need to be a coordinated impact or coordinated efforts by everybody to make sure it goes i do not believe that the customs should wait for a goose to come and having to go that i personally believe that we should identify the first five most important international ports where goods are coming in from and the customs should actually station their people there and then the goods should be pre-inspected before they leave. And they can set up systems, set up app where they can monitor the goods. So that while the goods are on high sea, the goods are cleared. And so that when it's landing on the port, it's leaving the port immediately. Only the, those ones that have not been done, those are the ones that cannot come in and you can do your physical inspection. You cannot physically inspect every single cargo at the time. So then the customs needs to change their strategy, but I don't know whether they're they are willing to do that because of course, with the amount of manpower they have, they have to keep them very busy. Uh, okay, um, the, this vessel turnaround you've mentioned uh, looks uh, easy when you're saying it. So practically, how do you think uh, this can be achieved? And you, you understand that uh, the customs and the Minister of Marine are two different ministries. Yes. So how do we uh, effect this collaboration to ensure that this vessel turnaround time is, is being achieved to 48 hours? It's personally, I think that <laughs> it's a very difficult statement to make, but I would make it. That I believe that... Um, it should be competition within NPA. You know, NPA has become too it's been, become too colossal. It's becoming like an NNPC right now. I think there should be a competition between Lagos ports, Western ports, and um, the Delta ports and the Eastern ports. Okay. And everybody should go and fight for their cargo. But right now, everybody is just so like, mm, if it comes, we close it and whatever, whatever income will come. So nobody is competing against it because if you now create a competition now, Delta ports will be fighting to get better security within the Delta port area and begin to talk to the last of Mesk and everybody, please come to my port. This is the efficiency. We'll report, we can give you this, we can give you this draft, we can discharge within so and so amount of hours. That is what's happening with the, the ports in the Western countries. In, 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 in other words, what they're doing there is that they're they are saying to you that Lagos cannot give you what we can give you. So if you go to the likes of Kotonu and Lume now, you'll be shocked at the level of efficiency there. What they have done is basically they have said, well, we know the Nigerians cannot do it. So let us take it a notch so that shipping companies, it's not about the government screaming. Shipping companies looking for efficiency, how to make their money. How do we turn our vessel around very quickly so that we don't sit in the port wasting time? Coming to Nigeria, they're wasting too much time, too much bureaucracy. Whereas they can go to Lume, within a short period of time, they've discharged, they're out of there, they're gone. So these are the issues we need to face. And secondly, the most important thing, you need to put square pegs in square holes. You need to put people who understand the issue of port operations. You cannot begin to put the management of people on these kind of areas and people who are novice, who are learning on the job. You can't learn on the job. You need to go out there with a clear conviction and begin to do your job quite clearly. Okay, away from that, looking at uh, Niwa's uh, uh, report uh, that uh, over 65% of cargoes uh, that bet in Nigeria ends up in the southeast. So, uh, what strategic move or steps uh, should the governors of the state take uh, to change this narrative and um, ensure uh, economic stability for the people in that region? First of all, if Niwa, which is a government organization, is saying so, government itself should have actually picked on this. Why? Government is spending over one trillion naira. They said over one trillion naira for the road infrastructure. Naturally, you know that not cars are the ones destroying this road, are the heavy trucks destroying this road. So therefore, government needs to find a way. How can we reduce the amount of trucks being that are applying our roads? That should be a government policy. 
And how can you do that? You already have laws in place that allows you to do such things. Now, for the Eastern ports, yes, quite a few of goods, as a matter of fact, quite a bit of goods are going to the Eastern ports. And I must say, I'm quite I'm quite impressed by what I'm hearing that's going to be happening in Abia State right now from about the 24 hour power with the manufacturing that's going to pick up. I can assure you that the, the people from Abia State, especially the Abia Axis, it's going to be something else. You know, that, that is going to be a, an economic hub for, for the list. But that doesn't stop there. They are landlocked. They need to get their goods out and they need to get it out at a sh cheaper and efficient way because they, they will not be competitive. If you are having to move a container out of Aba to the West and Central African countries and it's costing you $500, $2,000 per box. And whereas the guy in Italy is doing it at $500 per box, you are no longer competitive. So you cannot just look at the issue of production and isolation. So how do we do this? A river barge can carry 200, maybe 100, 200, 300 TEUs. That is between 100 to 300 trucks off the road. And of course, because it's carrying 300, its cost per, its cost per box is reduced so that the economies of scales are there already. Unlike if, for instance, I carry one container now, I'm taking one from here, I'll be hypothetical, from here to um, Onecha, let's say for instance now, it might cost me now, with the cost of this, it might cost me 1 million, 1.5 million naira for, for that. And I don't know what it costs now. But you can imagine if I was able to take a river container barge and load 200 containers on it, it will not cost me 1.5 million per, per container. It will be cheaper because I'm carrying a lot more containers. Or even going along the way, I can even drop some at Worry and then go along the way, drop some at, um, at Onicha before I begin to find my way Back. Back to in the other instance, I can also go through the Imo River, or maybe because Imo River, the accessibility is a bit tough right now because of the failure to dredge the access into Imo River. That's the entrance out of uh, Pobo, where Ikotabasi is. So what one can do quite clearly is that maybe we just have to come through Pobo Creek, but the distance is a little bit longer. So which means government now needs to make the Imo River navigable. It doesn't need to be extremely deep. You can get it to 3.54 meters draft so that at least those self-propelled equipments can begin to move up those, those, those areas. But for the Eastern State governors, in my own opinion, you don't need to do what everybody's doing. Everybody's building airports everywhere. You don't need to build airports everywhere. What can we do? Let us, for instance, look for the place that is most accessible to this equipment. And then we'll begin to see how we can invest in rail lines so that those states can now begin to build dry ports within their own states so that every goods that land at that port is not sitting down there but being taken immediately by rail to those places. So those goods are cleared at the dry ports, not at the river port itself. That's my thinking. Okay. We are due for a break. And when we return, we'll be finding out why shipping companies prefer uh, to use the Lagos ports. That will be after this short break. Please stay with us. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Reader and I still have with me Temisa Omashe. He is the former DG of Nimasa. Before we went on that break, uh, you were meant talking about what can be done in the Eastern port that they don't need to do what everybody is doing. A lot of infrastructure can be put in place to ensure that, okay, uh, the, the goods that comes to that place can be moved. That's so we move forward. Uh, why is it that most shipping companies prefer to use the Lagos ports, knowing that most of these cargoes end up in the Southeast? No, well, first of all, you have to look at the shipping companies there to make business. And basically, they're looking at efficiency and also the issue of security of their staff as well. So 
Now, what they are, what they do, and, I, and I've discussed with many shipping lines. Shipping lines are telling look, we are not interested in all these 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 TEUs. We'd rather be carrying 14,000, 15,000 TEUs and be taken to whatever location, okay? Now, that is what we want to do. So what they are trying to say, per se, is that we'd like to have a situation where we have a hub, okay. where we can come in and just drop all the cargoes. And then thereafter, you guys sort yourself out, which is good for international shipping. What that creates for Nigeria, what that allows us to do for Nigeria is to develop our own capital trade, whereby we can begin to pick up those cargoes and begin to feed the smaller ports, be the eastern ports, be them, whatever ports we need to have, feed them, and then bring back our exports. Because one of the challenges we're also facing is that a lot of agricultural exports have been gone. Somebody told me the story of some guy who was trying to ship yam abroad. The yam stayed so long on the roads getting to their proper ports. By the time it got to the port, it was cooked. Because it was so hot in the container that actually cooked the yam. So the bottom line question is these are the challenges, even exporters of agro produce. How do we do our agro produce? That is a major income earner. So my own thinking quite simply is that there's no need for everybody to pack into Lagos. We can begin to get things at those points. Lagos has its own cargo. Lagos can still be very, very busy without relying on the Eastern Group. So we need to begin to see how. So most of these guys are not going to one issue of security because there's a statement that they make five degree east, it's a war risk premium, so nobody wants to go there. That the issue of the paying the premium is not their problem. The premium, the, the, the many ship owners are more concerned about their staff being attacked and being killed. That has a lot of impact on them. And then also they're carrying these large vessels and they just feel like they, that's why you see how busy um Lucky Deep Sea Port is going to be. Lucky Deep Sea is going to be very, very busy because I'm sure you notice they are bringing in larger, larger vessels. And but but it might also be having the issues, um, apart from and, and think yes, I have in, in in terms of infrastructure. Yes. Where's the real? Yes, that is the but you notice what happened on the last Federal Reserve Council. They just approved the contract for the Lagos Portacot, Lagos Aquaibon Road, which is going to be 10 lane. So that's another attempt which they are trying to, to do. But still, we don't need to put everything on the road. We can take them, discharge them on the key side, load them on smaller feeder vessels and begin to feed all the other ports so that we can create whatever. Nobody's taking business from anybody, but everybody is actually trying as much as possible to see how we can expand. And Nigeria's economy is too big for one state ports. We need uh, to have more ports. No, no, no. In your, in, in your um, answers, you, you mentioned um, having uh, a particular port in the east that will serve the other uh, states in the uh, in the region yeah. uh, so but i'm thinking i'm worried about uh, the politics of which of the states will it be uh, then maybe you need to understand uh, the governors need to understand the economic potential mm. these will bring to the region yeah. maybe you talk us through that no 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 you see you, you cannot play politics when it comes to economics okay um, the bottom line, what the states needs to do is basically to take their hands off it. This is a private sector driven whatever. You need to look at what is the most efficient thing that we need to do. So what they need to do to come, the five eastern states need to come together and say, okay, can we just get a professional and let us be bound by his opinion on where is the most efficient place to put this, an economically viable place to put this and let it happen like that. And let us, four or five of us, become major contributors and become major stakeholders in these ports. So all of them can be owners of these ports, can be part and parcel owners of these ports, but then they will leave it to the professionals for them to determine where the location will be. That's my thing. It's not about politics. Well, before I let you go, um, what exactly do you want to see the Minister of Marine and Blue Economy do as regards our ports in Nigeria? Aside from um, the funds for rehabilitating the port, what else do you want to see to ensure that we are competitive? That is what is important. <laughs> That's a very, very difficult question. Um, first of all, the Minister needs to understand what he's in. Um, and with all due respect to him, I don't think he has grasped what it is. Um, Port operations is not an easy operations. You cannot bring in people who are lecturers or people who are um, lawyers in the offices or whatever to come and do port. You need port operations. You need professionals who know how port is efficiently run. Let me tell you, I'll be very sincere with you. The time of saying only Nigerians should occupy position is over. 
we need to look for the best hands to get us out of the mess we are in. We are in a big mess. And I must commend the likes of NNPC. NNPC went out there to look for foreigners to come and start running. Key, key areas in NNPC are being run by expatriates now. I think they had one in trading, they had one in NNPC retail, and then I think NPDC now is being run by ex expatriates. And then NNPC shipping is being run, was being, is being run by an expatriate. So it is time for us to say, look, let us stop all this ethnicism, nepotism, and uh, you know, whatever this is and begin to look for the right people that can get us out of this mess. We need professionals to get us out of this mess. I am not a professional. I may not be a professional. I may be an administrator, but I'm willing to look for the best hand, even if it's that we have to put a white man or an expatriate in the massa. Let's do it. If we have to do it in MPA, let's do it. If we have to put it in central, let us do it. If that is what is going to save this country, let us do it on one condition. You get a very young Nigerian who's brilliant to understudy him. Mm, that could take over. Thank you. Mm, that could take over. That's it. Because we must drive <laughs> this maritime sector if we must end over reliance on oil. Look. And the only, only, only escape route is the maritime industry. Exactly. And then we need professionals. We need people who know the job. Let's look for anybody, whether it's in America, in Europe, if we cannot find a Nigerian, get an expert to come in and do this job for us. We are in a mess. This is not the time to play politics with this business. This business is one of the major booming businesses in the world. And we are playing politics with it. And this is the wrong time to play politics with this kind of business. We need to get out of the mess. And shipping is a major revenue driver and economic driver for any country. And we're not taking advantage of it. So let us get the right people in there to do the right job. Ah, no shipping, no shopping. We must get the right people if we must drive this industry. Those are the words of Tebisa Omache. He's the former Director General in Imasa. I must thank you most kindly for your thought always on the show. Thank you very I've much. I've learned so much and I hope uh, my viewers too have learned so much. Thank, thank you, very, you much. very much for your time thank on you the show. Thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. And that's our show this week. I hope you've been able to learn something about why and how the shippers uh, from the East can also take delivery of their cargoes in the Southeast port. Join us every week on Maritime Radar as we explore potentials that will ensure the development of the maritime sector in Africa. You can also expect the latest in global and local maritime news plus industry insight right here. I'm Norma Obiaswalo. Many thanks for your time on today's show and see you again next week.